Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds Associates. I was hired by the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy to write a report to the Tennessee Valley Authority Board of Directors concerning a power plant they're planning to construct in Alabama. I have some real serious concerns about the power plant and if it can ever be constructed, let alone operated, that I'd like to share with you today. This plant was designed in 1968, that's at the height of the Vietnam War. Engineers used slide rules back then, I know, I was one of them. It was authorized to begin construction in 1974, and between 1974 and 1988, in fits and starts, Tennessee Valley Authority began to build it. It was 80% complete in 1988, and Tennessee Valley Authority decided to put it in mothballs. And what that means in a nuclear plant is that it's put in a protective environment so that rodents don't eat the wires and so that gases are maintained to prevent rust. And also equally important that the paperwork, the quality of the plant is assured. Well, in 2005, Tennessee Valley Authority said they didn't want to do that anymore. They wanted to just destroy this plant cannibalize it, sell it for scrap, and move on. They went to the NRC. The NRC said, sure, it's okay. Well, about two years later, in 2008, Tennessee Valley had a change of heart. And they said, no, we made a mistake. We really should be attempting to build this plant. And they went to the NRC. Incredibly, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission said, sure, no problem. You can construct it again, even though you've cannibalized it for the last two years. This month, in August, Tennessee Valley Authority is going to make the decision if they can build this plant. If they do, it'll go online in about 2018. That's 50 years from the time it was initially designed. The plant will be 50 years old before it begins to generate one electron. If it runs for 60 years beyond that, like most nuclear power plants are proposed to do, it will be 110 years old at the time it's shut down. I think there's some grave concerns that the Tennessee Valley Authority's Board of Directors needs to look at. I've identified seven of them in the report that I've presented today. I'd like to share those seven ideas with you in this short video. The first thing I looked at was this unique design of the Belafonte unit. It was built by a company called Babcock & Wilcox. Babcock and Wilcox built eight nuclear reactors worldwide. There's 440 nuclear plants. So eight divided by 440 means that only 2% of all the power plants in the world are of a design like being proposed for Belafonte. But it's even more unique than that. The existing eight B&W reactors are all what's called the 177 design. It's smaller. This is called the 205 design. It's bigger. This will be the only plant of that design in the entire world. And oh, by the way, Babcock and Wilcox design is a design that, that was constructed and operated at Three Mile Island. The second issue is groundwater. When this plant was being built in the 70s, they discovered there was an awful lot of groundwater and anybody who's ever put concrete in the ground knows that water sucks out the calcium from concrete and makes it weak. Well, at Belafonte, they put in pumps, some pumps, to continually pull that water out of the ground and keep the foundation strong. Well, in 2005, when Tennessee Valley Authority decided to cancel this plant and cannibalize it, they turned the sump pumps off. So for a period of years, Groundwater has been in contact with that foundation and has weakened the foundation. It's an impossible area to evaluate because you can't dig underneath a nuclear plant to see how bad the groundwater has occurred. But groundwater has been eating away at the foundation of that plant because Tennessee Valley Authority made the decision to turn the pumps off. The third area is quality assurance records. A nuclear power plant is only as good as the paperwork that supports whether or not the welds are any good 
whether or not the components are any good, whether or not they can be traced to something that is built by a quality assurance vendor. Well, in 2005, that entire system was destroyed. The quality assurance staff was laid off. The records were, were left in disarray. Without records, a quality assured nuclear plant doesn't exist. Now that may sound like a small thing, but in fact, it's what makes a nuclear plant a nuclear plant. It's a little bit like having an AKC dog. I mean, you've got paperwork to prove that it's an AKC dog. Well, what if you let your AKC dog loose in the dog park for six hours? Could you be sure that the puppies are really AKC? The answer is no. Well, similarly, when Belafonte lost control of its records, it's very, very difficult to go back and determine what is and what is not a quality assured piece of material. The fourth area is that the Belafonte plant was cannibalized. Demolition crews were allowed in, in 2006 and 2007, to rip out major components, nuclear pipe, nuclear valves, and to cut the nuclear steam generators in order to sell the copper on the scrap market. Now, Tennessee Valley Authority recognized after, about 2009, that they had a problem. They, they filed what's called an LER, License Event Report, that said they've lost control of the configuration. That means that they have no idea what's in that power plant anymore. It's a little bit like the book that goes with an airplane. Every airplane has a book, and in that book is every single change to that airplane. Well, when Tennessee Valley Authority decided to cannibalize the plant, they threw the book out. And now, as they're looking back and, and trying to determine exactly what's in that power plant, they've discovered they can't. This is a serious problem. Construction crews have been in ripping the plant apart for years, Controls in the environment, mice eating the pipes, eating the wires, causing electrical short circuits, um, the wrong material inside containment. All of these problems have occurred as a result of the unit being cannibalized. The fifth area of concern is the containment vessel itself. It looks substantial from the outside, but in fact, the steel tendons that hold it together have begun to rot. Workers were inside the plant and they heard what they thought was a shotgun. It turned out that it was a steel tendon snapping. As they evaluated that, they determined that other steel tendons had things called sulfites on them and others had water, which was causing rust. Now, this containment at Belafonte is really similar to the containment at Crystal River. We've talked about Crystal River before. A 60 foot long by 20 foot wide crack has developed in the Crystal River uh, containment. Now, it is possible that when they try to fix the Belafonte containment, they try to retighten it as a result of this exploded tendon, that it too could develop a 60 foot long crack, just like a Crystal River. The Crystal River reactor will be shut down for five years to correct that crack. And it won't be till 2014 till we know we've got it right. So to move forward on Belafonte now is a, is, is a grave risk, financial risk, to Tennessee Valley Authority because they won't know for sure if that containment can be fixed until Crystal River gets it right. And that's not gonna be at least until 2014. The sixth area is that there are historical precedents of people trying to start up a nuclear power plant and failing. And Tennessee Valley Authority doesn't seem to be paying attention to the fact that history is not on their side. The first reactor is Zimmer. Zimmer was built in Ohio, it was 98% complete when the utility decided the paperwork, the quality assurance records to make sure that the welds were really nuclear grade welds were not adequate. The plant was mothballed and then destroyed and turned into a coal plant. The other plant was Washington Public Power Unit 1. That's identical 
to the, to the Belafonte unit. Well, about eight years ago, the board of directors at Washington Public Power faced the same decision that Belafonte did. And they said, whoa, this is way too risky. As a matter of fact, it was an easier decision to make for the Washington Public Power District because that plant had never been cannibalized. So Washington Public Power and Zimmer threw in the towel because of quality problems and trying to start up a nuclear plant that was long delayed. Bellefonte has been delayed even longer. It'll be 50 years old before it ever goes online. And yet the board of directors at Tennessee Valley Authority is being told by management that it's a prudent expenditure to move forward on the design. I don't think so. The final point I made to the board of directors of Tennessee Valley Authority is that five nuclear accidents have occurred after this plant got its construction permit in 1974. There's lots of lessons that have to be learned. And the lessons from Fukushima will not be learned immediately. They'll be four or five or six years in the making. Containment issues at Fukushima, though, should be known to everybody. Three out of three of the containments have blown up. But yet, the Belafonte containment has problems already. Tendons have been known to explode. The reactor, very similar to it at Crystal River, has a crack in it. How can we move forward on the Belafonte reactors until we've completely learned the lessons from Fukushima? To sum up the report, this plant was built by men and women with slide rules in 1968. The first dirt was moved in 1974. It was mothballed in 1988. It was cannibalized in 2006. And yet the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and Tennessee Valley Authority think it would be a good idea to put it back together and operate it beginning in 2018. It'll be 50 years old if it can be constructed on the schedule that Tennessee Valley Authority claims. Then Tennessee Valley proposes to run it for another 60 years. It'll be 110 years old, the oldest plant in the world by a long shot, if this plan is allowed to go forward. I recommend to the Tennessee Valley Authority's Board of Directors that they have a, another look at this. I think there's too many risks and too many schedule delays, cost overruns, and the likelihood of serious operating problems in the future if they continue to build the Belafonte plant. The full report I've written is on the Southern Alliance for Clean Energy's website. Thank you very much.